Meet Cauliflower Ballinger, a 36-year-old woman who can be considered one of the OGs on YouTube. Soaring through popularity in the early 2010s around the same time as Shane Dawson, Smosh, and Trisha Paytas. But although she soared high in popularity, it doesn't mean she'll be soaring up to heaven, especially after all the backlash that she's been receiving. Interesting enough, July 4th was considered the hottest day on Earth in over 100,000 years. Coincidence or a sign? <laughs> So for today's video, it's a lot. We get inappropriate behavior with their teenage fans, offensive behavior to black people, gaslighting, and so much more. I could easily make this video over an hour long because it seems like every single day Colleen is being exposed for something new where something is resurfacing and somehow it just keeps getting worse. But for your sake and for my sake, I will be condensing everything and highlighting the important things that you need to know on why this may be the end of Colleen Ballinger. If you were in a spelling bee and asked for the word cancelled to be used in a sentence, there wouldn't be a more perfect example to use than Colleen Ballinger is being cancelled. As you can see from the dislike to like ratio on a recent video being 11 to 1 and being dropped from multiple sponsorships such as OneSkin and ZocDoc, Colleen Ballinger is officially cancelled. So as I said, there's a lot to cover, but I think that we should start this video off by talking about Adam McIntyre and his story because it's kind of what sparked the downfall of Colleen. He originally spoke up about this back in 2020 with the video titled Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying. Colleen found him on Twitter, he would give her tweet ideas, video ideas, he helped her out with friendship problems and talked her through her divorce. And the two eventually became friends, or at least that's what he thought. Things really started to take a turn when Colleen became too comfortable with Adam. In the 2020 video, he discussed how Colleen sent him a pair of red lingerie, and you may be asking, what's so bad about that? Well. Adam was only 13 at the time. Now, although she never wore it, her friend Corey did model it in a live stream back in 2016. I want to send him something. Do you want the bra, Adam? Adam, do you want the bra and panties? Tweet right now. Okay, maybe he'll want the panties. Although, then his parents will be like, you're not allowed to watch who is sending you panties. Colleen had a tradition of sending items that she owned to her fans, so at the time, she didn't think that sending this was any different. But regardless of what she claimed her intent to be, sending a 13-year-old fan this it's still really sus. Now this, it's only a small fraction of Colleen's disgusting behavior with their friends that's being called predatory and why she's being labeled as a groomer. Years ago, Colleen had group chats with their fans, one of them being with 14, 15 year old Adam among others called the Weenies or Colleenies Weenies, where she engaged in some really inappropriate conversations with her fans. Years ago, Adam was having a Q&A, so in the group chat he asked for some questions and Colleen asked him if he was a virgin and asked him what his favorite position in the bed is. And here's a screenshot of Adam saying, my ass looks so good today, y'all. Colleen responds by saying, picks Adam. Considering the fact that Adam was about 14, 15 years old at the time and Colleen was in a position of power and about 30 years old, it's really messed up to be asking that. These are just some of the many examples in which Colleen is engaged in some seriously questionable conversations with their fans. So next I want to take a look at a segment of a show that Colleen did on August 19, 2016 under Miranda Singh's live show in London, England. So at the show, a young fan by the name of James takes the stage and Colleen begins an improv skit with him with the setting being a camp. James, you know how to roll a, you know how to roll a lady, James. She refers to him as her summer bae and asks him if he would like to go on a date with her. Now, since you are my summer bae, I was curious, would you like to go on a date with me right now on stage? I would absolutely love to. <laughs> I love you. She then begins a skit by saying that she's going to be teaching the audience members who consist of kids that they're going to be taught how to go on a date on summer camp. We're going to go on a date together right now. Okay. So the first thing we have to learn is where to go at summer camp, the perfect place to go, okay? okay. So the best place to go while you're at camp to go on a date is deep and dark into the woods where no one can see you or hear you. So, oh, look, we're already here. Look at that, James. He's on rank school. Already here. This is like a dream to be here with you right now. Like, oh my God. Oh, I agree, I agree, James. It's a dream come true to be in the middle of the woods where no one can hear us. An adult triple the boy's age in the middle of the woods where no one can see you totally seems safe. Right? So the skit continues by Colleen saying that to have fun on the date, you can enjoy some snacks, but there is a problem. There are bears and you need to hide these snacks. So how do you hide snacks from bears? Well, according to Colleen, by putting them in your pants. To hide our snack from the bears, we have to hide it in our clothes. So for example. <laughs> there we go. At first it's just weird. There's nothing too alarming until we ask the boy if you like a cheese ball and has him reach in her pants. You want a cheese ball? Um, I'd love one. I can't believe I'm reaching in there right now. <laughs> 
Colleen and the crowd go on to laugh for about a minute long until Colleen asks the boy to give him a kiss. So, once you've shared a snack from my pants, you've had a little giggle together, and you compose yourself, your date can decide if you've had enough chemistry if he wants to give you a little kiss or I would. I, I would be honored. Oh. Oh. I love you. I like James, I love you too. I can't explain it like at the time, people didn't see this as a big deal because she's a female, he's a male. But if the roles were reversed, if Colleen was a man and this was a little girl, would your reaction be the same? And this is part of the reason why Colleen is facing so much backlash is because people want her to take accountability. We should really be calling Colleen Ballinger Cologne Ballinger because she is really dirty minded and in need of a better sense. And this wasn't just a one time thing. Here's a clip from a show in New Jersey where she also goes on a date with a young boy in the crowd. On their own, these things might not seem too crazy, but when you consider how Adam was treated, how this kid was treated, and with what I'm about to show you next, you just can't look at Colleen Ballinger the same. So the next video that I wanna take a look at is from a few years ago, but the girl in the video, Becky, recently went bio and came forward to share her story. So Colleen has different segments on her show. The forest date was one, but for this one, it's a yoga challenge. It doesn't sound too bad, but essentially young Becky was chosen to go up on the stage where she was told to lay down. Colleen then stood over her, grabbed her legs and stretched them as far apart as she could, which made Becky feel extremely uncomfortable. Now, as soon as I stood up from the audience, I saw Colleen's eyes widen because she realized I was not wearing pants. But for some reason, that didn't stop her from continuing. In fact, no adult at any point stepped in in this situation. Picking a minor from the crowd who was wearing a skirt and stretching her legs far apart like this in front of hundreds of people, it's just weird. But to make matters worse and so much more embarrassing for Becky, when Colleen was spreading her legs apart, she played a loud fart sound. <laughs> The girl had no idea what was going on, but to be in a vulnerable position like this in front of a crowd, in front of hundreds of people, thinking that a girl farted out loud, it traumatized her. In the video that Becky made, she recalls being extremely uncomfortable, leaving the show having a lot of people looking at her. That is the moment I will never forget where I was laying under Queen and she was smirking down at me while thousands of people were laughing and I was terrified that my body wasn't covered enough up enough by the spandex or the romper and not to mention after all this after the show i had to walk back to my car where there was many men staring at me in a very predatorial way that they were not looking at me before because of how exposed i had been on stage as you can see colleen clearly capitalizes on her young vulnerable fans by putting them in awkward and inappropriate situations but this is only a fraction of the behaviors that colleen has been receiving backlash for So next, we're gonna be taking a look at the infamous Trisha Paytas. I haven't been keeping up to date with her, but I know that in the past, she's been extremely problematic. But a lot of people have been commenting on the growth that Trisha has shown, and regardless of what she's done in the past, it doesn't mean that Trisha can't be a victim either. And the same even goes for Colleen. To say that you hope she dies, it defeats the entire purpose of calling out her actions. Exposing all the evil things someone has done, it should be said with the hope that they take accountability, be punished for their actions, and grow by not further engaging in the problematic behavior. Something Colleen clearly hasn't experienced yet, which is why we need to be calling her out for this. So Colleen and Trisha have been friends for a while, or at least were, until Trisha discovered something that is really just cruel for a friend to do. So Trisha recently dropped a video titled Colleen. Its level of creativity is honestly up there with the movie Dog, but to be fair, you don't really need a creative title. I mean, Colleen is pretty much just self-explanatory at this point. Oh, and speaking of dogs and Colleen, Colleen has been receiving backlash for a resurfaced video of her explaining the time when her family put down their dog because of a lie. Essentially, Colleen explained that when she was a child, she had bad temper tantrums. So one day she grabbed her dog, pinched their skin and dug her nails into it 
for no reason at all. The dog, clearly in pain through an act of protection, bit her, which caused her to get stitches at the hospital. Her parents asked little Colleen what happened, and you know how she responded? And they were like, what happened? And I was like, the dog just bit me. And then they had to put the dog to sleep because the dog was dangerous to be around. So I murdered the dog. Serious question, what is up with all these problematic influencers and dogs? Like. I don't know. But anyways, back to Trisha and Cologne. The two have collabed on YouTube and TikTok countless times. So for Trisha to expose Colleen, you know that it has to be a pretty big deal. So for those who don't know, Trisha has an OF account where she posts corn on the cob. Well, it was revealed that Colleen would randomly send people pictures and videos of Trisha's content and even have watch parties with the purpose of degrading Trisha. And this wasn't just on the phone. They even play Trisha on the big screen. The fan said, hey, congratulations on becoming parents. Um, which a month later she just responds with a, a nude of me and says you look so pretty in this. In these texts there's also friends of hers. They showed the viewing parties that were talked about to make fun of me. They did viewing parties of my adult content to make fun of me. Imagine paying for a subscription to your friend's OF account for the sole purpose of making fun of them. It's honestly really cruel. It's such a stab in the back. But what's even more shocking is that apparently one of the people that Colleen just would randomly send pictures of Trisha to was an underage fan. The text came out and the minor fan who is now an adult has said that those same pictures were sent to him. Yeah, that's not only extremely messed up, but it's also a crime. When you combine this with the way that she treated Becky, the cheeseball kid, and Adam, it really makes you scared to find out what else has Colleen done that we just haven't found out about yet. So finally, I want to discuss the accusations that Colleen is racist. Colleen mocking and partaking in offensive behavior towards varying groups of people isn't anything new. There was a video of Colleen and her friend attempting to imitate Latinas by doing an accent, talking about crossing the border, using stereotypes like working at a restaurant that sells tacos. Uh, uh. Uh, I crossed the border, I went to borders, and then I read a book on how to make my look. Uh, I'm Rosa uh, Sanchez, Carlita Sanchez. In another video, Colleen tells the story of Thanksgiving, which is essentially a skit about Christopher Columbus reaching the land of America and saying how Thanksgiving started. So there's three characters, the first one being Christopher Columbus, the second being a pilgrim, and the third character is Squanto, who was a real person and a really notable one. Anyways, the video is short, but it's really weird. She refers to Squanto as her pet. This is my pet. Squanto. And attempts to make a real event about indigenous people comedic, which as you can see is offensive to a lot of people. For some odd reason, Colleen has a habit of using varying racial groups of people for comedic purposes. How to sing like a big black woman. Now some of you might say that this is racist. Um, it isn't because he said it, not me, so. And I am telling you, I'm not going. And having just watched those three clips now, it brings some more validity in the next story I'm about to tell you. So for those who don't know, Colleen had a Netflix show titled Haters Back Off, which starred her Miranda Sings characters and had a total of two seasons. Well, one of the writers for the show recently came forward and shared her experience working with Colleen. This is April and having been the only black person in office, she revealed Colleen was not pleasant to work with. She published this article talking about her experience with Colleen and one of the things she said is, I overcall Ballinger once bragged that a creator was being canceled for saying the n-word. And if you think she went with n-word instead of hitting that hard R, then you haven't been paying attention. So essentially here she's exposing Colleen for having said the n-word. She also claims that Colleen said that since the show was in Washington, having black people would be distracting and she insisted on having limited background actors of color. And apparently when they were re-watching auditions, one of the actors was black and because the lighting wasn't good, Colleen shouted, where is he? And on top of all this, April revealed that Colleen had a weird obsession with making Miranda and her uncle's relationship even more rapey, which is just so strange. So this, it's a lot. I mean, I haven't even covered half of what she's being exposed for and called out for, but I think you guys get the gist of it. And to think that this is only the beginning. As the days go on, more and more people are coming forward and sharing their experiences with Colleen and it seems to be only getting worse. And really what made matters so much worse and more relevant was the apology video that Colleen dropped. She was accused of some serious things and that video just made it seem like a joke when in reality what we need is a conversation. And to make matters so much worse, Colleen even monetized her ukulele video. Her ex-husband spoke up about the situation on Twitter and 
this is what he said. Anyone feeling hurt and gaslit right now, my message to you is this. Your experiences were real. The proof is there. Your trauma should be taken seriously. The proof is there. Your anger is justified. The proof is there. You deserve better. Take your power back. Sending you love. He also said, this behavior was my reality. Anytime I spoke up and disagreed with her actions and rhetoric during 2009 and 2016, I was gaslit too. I was made to feel like I was always the problem. Any pain I felt was an inconvenience and was belittled. And Adam spoke up about her response, tweeting out that he is glad Colleen made the ukulele video because it shows Colleen's true character. Now, my only question is, is although she's receiving a lot of backlash right now, will this pass? Shane Dawson, James Charles, and countless other influence have gotten canceled in the past, but came back stronger than ever. So is this really the end of Colleen Ballinger? I want to know what you guys think about this, so leave a comment down below. Let's start a conversation. But anyways, that's officially going to do it for this video. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace.